Well, yeah, thanks. Um, thanks for putting this together. Um, you know, today we will go over kind of what Banner is uh, calling safe and healthy, you know, workplace solutions. So um, I am Anthony Gross. I'm a strategic account executive, which that title probably doesn't mean a whole lot to this, but I've been drafted into the, uh, you know, we're getting a lot of traction with companies trying to ensure that their employees are safe when they return to work. And uh, that wasn't a, you know, a business unit or a product family before any of this happened. But in the last month or so, two months, we've we've been turning around, you know, new solutions using existing products. And uh, I've been drafted into being the point person. So I'm a corporate resource. Um, Tom Gainer is the local banner um, area manager that that works with Gilson. Um, it can be a local resource to, uh, you know, get demos and things like that. So, so with that, you know, we are what well, we're kind of terming our our motto is we're we're creating solutions from the factory floor to the retail door. So. You know, our, our traditional customers are, are going to be more in that manufacturing realm, but, um, you know, whether it's a manufacturing customer or even some retail customers are reaching out, everyone's looking for a solution to, you know, make sure that whether it's your employees or your customers that are coming in feel safe. Um, so, you know, it, it's great if we can get back to work, but if the employees don't feel safe to come back to work, um, you know, there's going to be a disconnect there. And these solutions are targeted to to ensure that, it, you know, shared areas get cleaned on a regular basis. Um, and there's some sort of tracking and traceability to that. And then also just to, to ensure, you know, obviously social distancing has been pounded in our heads. Um, <clears throat> you know, we are... We will highlight a solution here that can ensure, you know, limiting the amount of people in in smaller areas. So, uh, you know, that's kind of our motto. Um, we've got three applications or three kind of divisions with multiple applications in there. But uh, so the first one here is, you know, capacity and, and density management. Um, so what this is is. You know, I, I think we've all probably walked into a grocery store or even a, a Home Depot where they're counting people coming in and out. And they use people on the entrances and the exits to, to do this. They may be using an iPad. They may be using the old, um, you know, clicker. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we've created a way to, to, to automate this. Um, but it's not only going to be, you know, done at the retail stores. We're seeing a lot of people that, you know, they're staggering lunch schedules. So all their employees that are eating in the cafeteria aren't there at the same time. Or during shift change, they're staggering the, the shift change. They don't have hundreds of people going back to a locker room to to change their, their uniforms before and after working. Or um, even, even looking at bathroom capacity. How many people can be in the bathroom at one time before it's filled up? Um, you know, I, I liken it to the, to the airplane approach, right? So when you're on an airplane, they have a, a light that tells you if the bathroom is in use or not to ensure that people don't get up because there's some risk associated to standing in a line on an airplane with turbulence. Same thing here is if that bathroom's full, they want to just turn a light red to, to let people know across the plane, hey, it, it's busy right now, you know. Um, come back when it's green because there is some risk associated to having too many people in a confined area. The second, um, you know, solution we've, we've been um, putting together here and is the work cell and workspace cleaning. So this is a, um, a, a solution to ensure that the shared areas, you know, shared workplaces, the, the, you know, the working desktops or, um, you know, the, the tool cribs or any shared spaces in your manufacturing area 
um, get cleaned and they get cleaned on a, on a timely basis. And, and we'll get into to more details here on, on how it works. But then we're also seeing, you know, the third point here is um, touchless switching and indication. So there's a lot of push buttons. There's a lot of touch points that, you know, could easily be eliminated. And Banner has some, some you know, contactless uh, sensing and indication solutions to help, um, you know, get rid of those, those mechanical push buttons when you uh, need to start or initiate a process. We can do that with a touchless um, sensor of ours. So, so those are the three applications that we'll be focusing on here. And if anyone has a question, you know, feel free to, to type it into the message box. And I think Will will be letting me know <clears throat> when, the, uh, when the questions come up and what they are. So, you know, where, where we're seeing some traction with this and where we're seeing some success, right, is, you know, this is, this is kind of what the past has looked like, right? So I think on the left here, this is a, a bathroom line at a Walt Disney World. Um, things like that aren't going to be tolerated. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people in the space at, the, at our good old Minnesota State Fair, which also got canceled this year, you know, they're trying to limit that. Um, so what this turns into is in industrial common work areas. So locker rooms, the lunch rooms, and even retail stores. Um, you know, they're they're putting things in, whether it's plexiglass to ensure that people aren't, you know, don't have cross contamination, um, you know, or even this people counting or and and clean workspace solutions is all in an effort to ensure that their employees feel safe and confident and reduce anxiety. So, you know, where, where we're seeing a lot of this is, is the bathrooms and the locker rooms, the cafeterias, and even really tight walkways we've seen where it's one, you know, real tight hallway where they only want one person in there because if two people were to walk you know, side by side each other, it would be too tight of a, an area. So <clears throat> the capacity and density management solution here, <clears throat> we've all seen people standing outside in, in a line. Um, and whether it's a, a retail store, whether it's a manufacturing plant, um, this is something, you know, as people badge in, there is a, you know, you go scan your badge, there's a line that forms. Um, they want to limit people in in various areas. So in this photo here, you can see a, a doorway and that yellow sensor is going to be sensing a person as they go into um, a given room. And then on the outside, we've got a, a stack light and that's a red green stack light. And uh, it'll let you know if it's safe to enter or not. So if it's, you know, below the capacity that you set, it'll be green. And if it's if it's above, it'll be red. Uh, this is 100% automated using existing products that, that Banner had in its portfolio. We've modified them and created a little script that, that programs um, everything. You know, you buy it as a kit and it's it's peel and stick. We're doing all the the configuration at Banner and shipping it out. So um, Kind of what the the bill of materials looks like is is we've got a in the top left here you'll see two sensors these are yellow in the photo we've actually transitioned these to a black housing to blend in a little bit better but those two sensors at each doorway or hallway or entrance or exit something that you're trying to monitor those are directional sensors so they can tell whether someone is walking in or walking out of a location. Um, in the middle there, you see the brackets and the reflectors. So these, these create a, a beam on that door that the people walking through break. Um, in the top right, this is called a direct select, but what this acts like is a scoreboard. So this could be placed on the outside of, a, of the door, right next to, um, you know, the, the light that allows them to go in or out, but this will show you a count of how many people are in, say, a cafeteria. If your limit is 
you know, you only, you only want 20 people in a cafeteria at any given time. This will show you how many people are in there. Um, you can also you can also add extra, you know, scoreboards of these. So if you had, you know, a, a want to look at how many people are in a given area at say a, a main control office, um, we can add extra ones in there as well. Then down in the middle, you'll see the tower light. So it's it's laser etched. Uh, pretty obvious in terms of, you know, when the green is on, that walk is okay to walk in, and then you've got a stop sign. Uh, and these are laser etched at, at Banner's factory and, and shipped up. All of these components use, you know, Banner's wireless technology that we've been using for the last, you know, 10, 15 years to wirelessly communicate and create a peel and stick solution that you guys can deploy um, at your facility without you know running a bunch of conduit and wires and things like that so the sensors are battery powered um, the scoreboard is battery powered and then our our tower light it just requires 110 volt you know outlet so um, pretty non-invasive in terms of installation so this is the automated people counting management um, kind of overview and you know we do have the you know we can create a bill of materials if you guys had an area where you thought this would be something that would be worthwhile you know reach out to your local gilson rep and we can come up with a bill of materials for you it uh it's it's pretty simple we just need to know how many doors whether or not you want to see a count and whether or not you want that uh the stack light there so um it, with that, we can come up with a bill of materials and uh, kind of give you an idea of, of what your system would look like. Is there any questions yet? Uh, not yet. Um, one thing that I ha actually have a question. Um, what is the expected lifetime of those batteries? So the, the expected lifetime is dependent on the traffic. There's, there's a few different variables. Um, you know, on, on like a bathroom type where there's going to be a, a constant flow of traffic. Anytime someone walks through these photo eyes, it reports back to the gateway. So the more traffic, the less battery life. But in a high traffic area, like say a bathroom, um, we are putting it at about eight to 10 or eight to 12 months. So and after a few, um, you know, after a few days, we can get a better idea of what that looks like but we've been testing some at banner here and we have you know a handful of these systems deployed um but you know conservatively saying about eight months to, to 12 months is is the expected lifetime on them thank you anthony that's all we have so you know right now we are you know, and this has been live within Banner for maybe three to four weeks. And we've been putting together the build materials, you know, case by case. Uh, but next week we will have kits available, which which make it a lot easier. So when you when you look at you know density management, um, there's there's two really applications that that come up they want a a room with multiple doors and they want one totalized count this would be something like a cafeteria where you have multiple entrances multiple exits or even if you think of like a retail store they've got a say a garden center and a and a uh you know a home improvement side they may want to know which doors are are most used but they want the total count at the end of the day so we can do both total count and we, we've got one door, two door, and four door, you know, kind of pre-canned. And this isn't just, you know, to show the bill materials, but um, just to show that, you know, out of the box, we can do one, two, and four doors. And uh, we've done up to seven doors on one controller. Um, but then we also have, you know, say for a bathroom where you have a men and women's bathroom side by side we would do say a two door multiple count where you're trying to keep an individualized count for say the men's bathroom and then also a count for the women's bathroom. So the, the two options would be a totalized count or kind of the individual door count. 
um, but we've got kits for both. This greatly simplifies kind of, um, you know, putting together the bill materials. And this, this we believe maybe would handle 70% of what we've seen come in. There's going to be these fringe, you know, we've got five doors and we want, you know, two of them to be summed up and the rest to be individual. Um, but on those, we can do a, uh, a case by case basis, you know, work with Gilson, they'll work with Banner and we'll put together a, a system that, that suits your needs. So we've got a, a got, we've got a automated people counter and then we've also got a, a manual and you know it, this one in terms of a, a manufacturing facility probably doesn't have a ton of uh use for this but i did want to highlight this just to show that we can use these direct selects so these are these scoreboards and the other you know the previous the automated solution that was used just to show count but it can also be used as an input device right so you can click up to say a person walked in um, and click down so i think you know you can click up it counts to 23 and it'll show 23 all around and, and click up we'll go to 24 and 25 but uh you know these are all standard banner products that have been repurposed for the efforts towards these solutions um, these direct selects have tons and tons of uses um, they can be used both as an import input and a scoreboard so when you you know, when Will showed the the flow lab, um, you know, this can be used in, in many other ways. It could show you what the fill level, how percentage, you know, what percent full is a tank, things like that. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight this just to show that it can be used both as an input and kind of an output device. Hey, Anthony, we do have one question that came in. It might be uh, good to hit it now before it gets sure. Too far gone. Um, says, how easy is it to change the number of people allowed in? We expect the occupancy to go up from 50% allowed to 75% allowed in as we get back to normal. Yeah, so the, the occupancies, I, I believe I have a slide a little bit, it might be the next one or it might be towards the end, I can't remember, but I highlighted some of the things that, that we've developed to you know, to help the end end customer and user of this. Um, but it walks through how to set up the the limits and that's done on the face of the controller. Um, so there's a little LCD screen there. There's some up down arrows. Um, you can set a, a, you know, occupancy allowance. So you can set it at five, you can set it at 50, you can set it at 500. Um, we also have a, a warning level so if you wanted to have like a yellow light turn on when you're approaching you know that'd be used for more larger counts so say you had a cafeteria and you wanted no more than 50 people in there um you could turn on a warning level at 45 to let you know you're within 10 percent of being full and, and maybe you should pay a little bit closer attention to it but that's all set on that lcd screen pretty easily um there's you know about five essentially settings that you can you can change Thank you, that's all we have. And so the, the second um, application and, you know, this I believe has, has widespread use in the manufacturing side and we're seeing, um, you know, customers for, for both of these first two applications, um, whether it's, you know, automotive customers or tier one suppliers, um, people with a lot of, you know, a large amount of people during shift change that have, you know, maybe in a, a bathroom or a locker room, things like that, but also a lot of, mount, a lot of shared workspaces. So um, th this workstation sanitation automation, you know, I think it's, we're calling it a, a safe sanitation kit is what we're calling the kits, but this allows you to, you know, pick say say up to 20 different locations tied back to one controller you know wirelessly um, to create a schedule for those areas and you know clean them as often as they need to be cleaned 
and and there's gonna there is a you know a guidebook out there that's been kind of open sourced um and that's a good reference tool we've been working with a handful of companies and they all kind of come back to this uh this, this playbook and it's so it's been developed by a company named lear l-e-a-r but if you just google lear um covid19 uh playbook you'll get you know a 30 page document and it covers anything from how to isolate your workers and keeping them safe to how often to clean different areas based on you know how many people are working there and and what is being done so that that's a, a point of reference but uh this would allow you to take those areas and then based on a specified cleaning time whether it's every hour or every shift or right before shift change um, you know you can schedule those out turn on lights when they need to be cleaned um, as a person cleans it they can touch that little touch button that he's about to actuate there to say i've this area has been wiped down uh, it's clean and that resets the timer so it's kind of like a track and traceability i know in in certain states specifically california they've been battling you know quite a bit with uh with tesla you know tesla wanted to get back to work california said it was unsafe um tesla has you know there's i think there's roughly 200 stops along the process of making a car for for their electric cars and all those areas need to be cleaned and and they've resulted to to using this and a bunch of other things to keep their employees safe to try in an effort to get back to work but um you know this this they would use this to say okay let's clean these four work areas you know during this hour and the next hour we'll clean the next four but it's in an effort to make sure every spot every you know shared workspace is getting cleaned on a regular basis and then it's also kind of closed loop feedback let let you know the the controller know that someone actually did clean it they can you know track it and send it up to the cloud if they want um so in case something did happen they've kind of got a, a cya to make sure that hey we did our part you know so and i will say that the the schedule can be either time based so whether it's every hour or it can be schedule based that is you know synced back to a local clock um, the the time can be set on the face of the controller but if you want to do say uh you know at 8 15 there's a there's a break so we're going to clean from 8 15 to 8 30. you can set those specific time at uh using banners you know uh cloud dashboard and i'll show off an image of that you know kind of what it looks like but this is a pretty simple bill of materials so we have the, the base controller and then for each station you would use an indicator light and a direct select and that direct select is again a scoreboard it can show how many minutes since the last cleaning or it can show how many minutes until the next cleaning. So you can imagine yourself at a workstation and this scoreboard would say, you know, 60. That'd be 60 minutes until the next clean. And as it gets down, maybe at 10, it'll, that uh, circle will start flashing yellow to let you know, okay, it's getting close. And then when it's overdue, it'll turn red. If it hasn't been cleaned in time, it'll turn red. Um, so on one controller we can do up to 20 different locations um, each location typically is going to have that remote indicator as well as that direct select for the operator interface and again banner has created a simple bill of materials here um, so you can do it we've got two two styles either built on cycle time which would be you know every 15 minutes every hour or you can do it um based on on a set schedule whether it's a work schedule or or something else so and with all of these kits banner is including 90 days free of what is called banner cds this is our connected data uh systems and our so our controller can send all this data up to the cloud there's two ways to do it you can do it via a local network connection just on your LAN 
or you can do it via a you know a sim card with cellular access in the in the gateway in that controller so a couple different ways to do it um some of the data that you would get on the on the you know the cloud dashboard would be um, on the left side here we've got the cleaning automation scheduling you want to look at you know that that red is the time the overdue you know location so if you had 20 locations and two of them were being ignored um, you can see how long they were ignored and what the delinquent uh you know cleaning stations were and how long they were uncleaned for um on the on the right side here this is a dashboard that'll show you you know what the average occupancy was over time which doors were being used the most and these dashboards are all pretty easy to configure so um just a couple of days ago i had you know 15 minutes we created a, a custom dashboard for a customer that wanted a little bit different look and feel to it and that that can be easily done so any questions on that will yeah we do have uh one that came in uh are the passwords that can be set up to keep unauthorized people from resetting the cleaning schedule Yep, this can all be password protected. So on our banner CDS website, you can have different user access levels. Um, so maybe you have a, a manager that sets the schedule for cleaning times. And then you have just kind of a read only if people want to to look at that. Or maybe you put it up on a TV and you just want to know which you know stations have been cleaned and which ones have not been cleaned. So that's all we got. So thank you. Okay. And then from the web here, I just want, you know, you can reset both the count or, you know, you can reset, reset everything. So um, lastly, we do have some, uh, some non-contact, um, you know, sensing or switching and activation. So my, my thing, I go with, with my, you know, my wife and my old one-year-old, we go on a walk and you get up to the, to the crosswalk and it's time to push that button and, and i've never been a germaphobe but all of a sudden i think everybody's germaphobic habits have have come full full strength and uh so i still don't consider myself a germaphobe but i don't really want to touch that button that ever it just it this whole you know covid 19 has made everyone aware of just how often we are we are sharing and touching things that other people touch without you know really cleaning anything so um traditionally you know we on the left side that's a capacitive touch button where a person would actually go up and, and touch it uh that has been you know released for for a few years on the right side we've actually got a sensor-based option of that so this is a, a contact list you just wave your hand over the top it looks out about eight inches so we have different lengths you can look out two four eight inches above that that light and when you wave your hand over it it can transition from a green light to a red light it can show you that you know we're showing at a time on the right side but these have been used for anything from initiating like a, a keurig coffee pot to um starting up a a water faucet uh they used them for for timing you know kind of clean so there's a recommended time how long you should wash your hands so they put one of these in front of a faucet when no one's there it's off when you put your hands in front of it it turns blue and as you're washing your hands after i think it was like 20 seconds it'll turn green and flash green at you letting you know that you wash your hands long enough so there's there's countless uses for this um in a lot of people are coming up with just with crazy applications but um I just want to highlight that you know we have contactless switching um, options for people that are looking to get rid of those mechanical push buttons or um, you know push buttons that people constantly touch all day. So and I, I know we can get this PowerPoint out if anyone has interest. I did want to highlight just a couple you know, things we put together. So we do have like kind of a parts guide that shows you all the different uh, part numbers to create a bill of materials. Uh, we also put together a, a 
a user guide uh, to show you best case scenarios for you know how to on an L type entrance how do you mount sensors to get a reliable count um, outward versus inward opening doors and we've got and it's like a 15 page document but we can share this and this is what is sent out with uh, you know anyone who orders that that people counting kit this will kind of give you insights in how to maybe best apply that technology to get a reliable count And that's that's really all I've got today is just, you know, I wanted to highlight the uh, the kind of three applications that we're seeing. And, uh, you know, if anyone has any interest in this, you know, feel free to, to reach out to your Gilson rep and, and we can get you more info. I know there are a handful of, you know, demos um, floating around. So if you want to see a demo in person, we can coordinate that. Um, but yeah, that's really that's really all I've got.